many times, Rex, and, and the organization for the opportunity to tell you our story. What is the past, where we go to go, if luck is with us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, the title is to a national EHR in Spain. The E is electric, not, not strictly electronic. <laughs> because our level is still at a very basic interoperability level. Okay? We have to combine EHR standards for a very heterogeneous environment. And we were taken to a project which has no ending date. We do not have a deadline. The process is here to stay, and the future is very open. So we are entitled to be in error and then correct the mistakes. And this is a privilege. And we have this at the ministry. It is not common to have this opportunity if you are trying to give a future to a company. In 2009 to 2005, 2009, the national health system in Spain decided to initiate a cooperation to develop content, deploy connections and messages, index content and documents, and share the content for the good of the citizens, globally. So the mission was very clear, to be able to exchange nine asterisk, I will tell you later about that, document types shared across 18 autonomous communities. And the coverage space, the maximum coverage was 46 million with one to n folders per person. The maximum today is seven, but seven folders is a lot because some patients are traveling very frequently and they receive healthcare in many environments of different communities. So first, what was wrong? We missed one very important decision. The reason for that was that semantic people and technology people were not able to have an agreement. So technology won, of course. And semantic was taken to a kind of box waiting for a brighter future which has not not come until today. We didn't adopt an EHR communication standards, a real one. But we adopted seven or six, six or seven important decisions. We selected an implementation <laughs> standard for patient summary. This is the meaning of HCR summary in CDA level three. Well, level three, kind of. We selected PDF for the rest of the documents. For the rest is eight types of documents. Some people say that we are the largest factory of photocopies in the world. <laughs> the persistence has placed a regional or institutional system. So we don't have a central repository. We don't have that. And the regions keep indexes on individual documents. The regions then notify and update one preference to a single patient folder per region. So we have an index of folders, and the regions have the index to the documents. As nomad CT, 
was adopted as reference terminology for doing all kinds of things, including defining the what we call the left part of the model, the structure. Of course, it is used for the right part of the model, but we introduce an additional effort for being able to define, using this terminology, all the structure items at any level. Document, section, entry, element, cluster, everything. If you go to the link we have here, you can see This is our KPA <coughs> report. We publish this every three months. Not many changes, but we, you can follow the evolution of the project using this. As you see, the coverage is now quite high. It is 94% of the population, but each citizen may have more than one follower. Our estimation is that today we have 350 million documents indexed in the system. Not all communities are offering the same range of services, so it is a source of variability, <coughs> but the ring is now very well populated by most regions. Some regions have not been able to advance as much as the others at offering the documents to the rest, but they offer a different variety of documents to the rest of the regions. So mobility of patients is not a problem if one citizen finds their documents in the system. So coverage is very important. The process has taken eight years. I'm sorry, I am. I will try to do this. This is the chronogram of evolution of the process. You can find you can find this at our web <coughs> page if you want additional details. Of course, if you want any kind of additional details, please tell me. At the ministry, we say, any doubt you have, we can make it bigger. I lost my OK, let's return to the. Then, since we didn't adopt a modeling standard, but we adopted an implementation standard, we were not able to do some things that we consider were important. The variability of implementation was totally out of control. HL7 CDA means different thing according to the author of the document. And there was a limited interoperability, not the genuine interoperability we want to have. So evolving was required. The evolving thing in my organization is sometimes seen as the photograph you are seeing. But in 2013, we adopted as baseline the ISO 136. In order to be able to consult clinicians and implementers about their needs and construct very basic models of the expected structure of the documents, we adopted a small set of standardization policies, just nine pages. You can read it at the bus with principles and strategies in 2015 and shared document redesign was 
initiated. However, the full catalog has not reached a sufficient development stage. And this effort was stopped because of limitations on the capacity of the team to push forward this standardization effort. Folders support was needed from the same principle, but for the distributed content, we don't have a solution. For example, now we are trying to implement the EUPS, but the absence of folders support is a severe limitation. <coughs> the next steps include regulation versus technical specification. And this is a critical decision. Regulation in Spain is going to require political agreement. I will not comment further on that, even if you ask. <laughs> so we prefer <coughs> technical specification. We have to update a collection of archetypes we have, which are very basic, but they are very useful. We received the help of Veratech at one time, so thank you to the guys and girls of that company because they were very helpful to have reference archetypes for everything. We have participated in one present effort called EHRXF, which is a attempt to standardize for exchange almost the full structure of a clinical record. The problem is that they go so deep at the technical decisions that it is impossible to use this kind of recommendation to standardize inside Spain. We have a mandate to facilitate semantic strategy alignment, but not with the most basic level in Europe. We don't want to standardize with countries that don't have anything. You have to standardize with the benchmarks, with the best ones. Otherwise, Spain will have to stop and we will not be able to elaborate the resources we need for advancing further. We maintain that EHR.com and OpenAir are very welcome for regional developments. We didn't find the role of EHR or I would say we didn't find the role of the ministry at the open air community, but we are interested in identifying the opportunities at this meeting. We sustain that PDF is to be considered a byproduct of style sheets of structural dialects or languages, not the primary product because PDF is a drawing. It is very good for printers, <laughs> but doesn't have anything to do with semantic interpreting. And HL7 RIM 3 is a decline. We see that even the HL7 organization is beginning to get rid of that because of the difficulties of implementation. But this decline also has to be controlled or we will have negative impact. So it is a risk. The time for fire 
didn't come yet because it is so unstable and full of issues that you have to be very careful to put the word adopt at the legal principles. You have to be very careful. But certainly fire will play a major role once it is a little more stable. The time to migrate is going to come, but when? So our <coughs> advice is to be locally operational with a global vision, update the regulation on the definition of structure of documents, because it is a little obsolete, obsolete 10 years after. We have to be able to explain EHR modeling to clinicians who are the end users and are able to identify the requirements, which for us, for us is the most important thing. We propose to use a decimal, very simple classification for EHR documents so we can share by groups with Europe, not everything at the same level, and provide semantic services from the National Release Center for SNOM CT is quite important because the main thing that users of SNOM CT are asking for today is development of new concepts. And after that, they want models. We have to decide if we want folders or we want consolidated documents. Consolidated is very powerful, but it is very difficult. And folders is a very good way to go for me. We propose full EHR documents, catalog, and attributes for exchanging full medical records. I always say medical, and I should say medical nursing records. But we have to be able to share a model for health information granularity. My surprise was that many people are not able to identify a difference between ICD family and Snowman City. In the model we follow, The individual citizens, layer one, has to be implemented using SNOM. If you go to the upper level two, then the classifications dominate the field. <coughs> but today, standardization cannot be completed only with terminology and classifications. We need additional resources. Just name them. Maybe models, ontologies, thesauri, and mobile phones. The applications are very wide, but you have to select your priority. And those resources at level three, in my view, are still to be defined. Has to be with artificial intelligence, with data, real world research, machine learning, epidemiology, etc. You name it. So this is my email address. This is my organization. 
introduces the open up and session. That was a very interesting point of view and uh, a very nice feedback from, from the Spanish Ministry of Health. So is there any questions from the audience? I, I have a comment, maybe, while other people think about asking, oh, we're then talking now. Thank you, Andrew. <laughs> I, 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 I forecast you are, uh, you are answered, but uh, now when we are talking about the patient reported outcomes, and uh, I mean, we are always talking about the patient center approach and so on, and we are demanding so, uh, so much information that's available on the mobile phone of the patient and the Internet of Things and so on. How do you think that can fit into this? Uh, Two questions: open air uh, uh, schemas, and also uh, from the uh, Spanish health ministry. What do you think? It, it's visible or possible, or that's uh, for the next uh, century? Let's, let's see. <laughs> because that's challenging. Thank you, Nathan. I, I don't think it is going to occur very soon, but obviously, the national health system sharing documents is one element which is very important but until we do an additional effort a pedagogical intervention in front of decision makers it is not going to be possible to have advanced implementation of this device because they are not convinced that this is the present they still believe it is the future. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we have to change the minds of people who are making decisions in order to be able to share the content using this device, not the computer. Well, the computer is very well, but the real decision is on going this way. I'll just come in on that conversation. The, the slide that I skipped is the one that is absolutely relevant to this question. Because uh, I, I mean, I'm a grumpy old doctor, and I've always, historically I've always thought that person-held records were kind of junk, to be honest. You know, it was people's weights and heights and, you know, how many steps they'd run. And my mind was changed a few years ago when I realised that people were starting to use the idea of the person-held record for things that I thought were actually clinical things, like your uh, POMRs, uh, not POMRs, um, uh, PROMs, patient recorded outcome measures, uh, getting involved post-operatively so they communicate with the nurse in the hospital after an operation, it saves them an appointment, it saves the hospital an appointment. And I thought, that's great, but actually it's not, a, this isn't a patient record, this is something that clinicians need to rely on. And a lot of these technologies were built on a phone, no medical legal cover, not auditable, uh, probably not extendable. And I'm thinking we, we need to bring patients in. So your question was, can you build a patient record on top of it? Absolutely, that's what we're going to be doing in Scotland. So people will use their phones to interact, but the data will sit on an open air based, what we're calling a co-produced health record, where patients essentially become a professional partner for the very thin slice of their, their interaction with the record. They have full access rights, but they have the same author and editing rights and responsibilities as a professional. So you can't overwrite your data, you can't zap your database. You're part of the team. And I, I think that's quite an exciting way to think forward. Because it is very powerful. Uh, we were talking yesterday about the, the challenges of, of monitoring process. And I think a lot of that will be allowing patients to eyeball what's happening or what's not happening. Because most of the mess ups in my professional career were due to failures of process, not to fail failures of diagnosis. And the more eyes we have on that, whether they're technical or professionals or, or, or ordinary people, the better. So just a, a more specific question. Do you foresee something uh, like the, or if or when, 
something like a patient uh, medication list being visible as a shared object that any health institution can interact with and update. So when I say a medication list, we can say the same argument for allergy lists and the problem list and a lot of other, the vaccination list, these kind of things. Because everybody knows that right now in all countries we still have uh, the, the best way to find out what medications is the patient on the doctors just interrogate the actual patient every time and is it the red pills or the blue pills that you're still taking, etc. So we do have representations obviously in very kind of various EMR systems, uh, but they're all fighting with each other so you can't trust any of them. Technically it's not that hard at all. It, other industries do this all the time. So the, a test question for a, um, at least a logically single patient centric record is whether a medications list is likely to emerge and whether you, you see it as something that might come sometime in the strategy of what has happened in Spain. Thank you. The vision of a medication list, updated, active medication, is present since six years. And we are still at the design of that. We have a medication list with active medication at the patient summit. We have it. The problem is that the patient is not able to hide information that shouldn't go to the pharmacy. Diagnosis, have AIDS, have syphilis or something. So since the patient summary is so exhausting, it cannot be used as a passport to go to the pharmacy. Fortunately, the coverage of electronic prescription in Spain is so high that you can go almost everywhere. So the ministry has assumed a role to facilitate and help for changing uh, uh, prescriptions. But we have a role at facilitating the exchange of medical information that shouldn't be at the pharmacy office. So we need an initial problem. And we should decouple the pharmacy order from the clinical patient uh, summary. We have a design, we have an archetype for that, and we are waiting for the opportunity to include the 10th document at the database. Okay. Any more questions from the audience? So uh, I, I will just finish with a comment if you want to uh, provide some feedback. So in Norway, we recently adopted or became part of what was the IHTSDO. Nowadays, it's not international. So I have seen uh, this hierarchy. So how uh, my feeling when we try to uh, or think about implementing a SMSD is, is that it is not clear at all. I mean, it's a fantastic terminology. I really like to play with that from a research point of view. But when it comes to taking doctors and thinking about the implementation of each chart, it seems to be extremely complicated and it, it's not really clear the uh, organization of teams and so on to organize that. So what, what, what's your uh, view on that? Oh, uh, <laughs> 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 and before my speech, I heard something which is very relevant. Don't expect miracles. And you have to have a continuous workflow of data from previous encounters in order to populate your record. I think that many decision makers are a little, you know, skeptical about Sonoma CT because they are asking Sonoma to do things that are better done with other resources. So if we ask for something that cannot be done with Sonoma, your future is very, you know, very dark. 
the monolith and the population of data with the most common source of useful data, which is previous history and the same vision, is something that is dependent totally on the modeling of archetypes of reference and sharing information models, not on terminology. Because if you put snobby in the machine, but you oblige the doctors and the nurses to do many, too many clicks, they will not be very happy. Fortunately, this is true for older people and is less true for young people. But until those young people become decision makers, we have to do something. We have to model. Okay, so thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thanks.